look at that. It's about 7.30 in the morning and today we're going on a diving adventure to the other side of the island. We were told by a few locals to really see some cool wildlife, we should sail to the other side of Ascension to a place known as Bird Island. Are you guys ready to go diving? Yes, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> what is that little bowl of fur? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Previously on Delos, we celebrated the 4th of July. Go on a fishing competition and chat with some locals about conservation on the island. It's another glorious morning. Calm. And we're going to go around the side of the island past English Bay over to here. Boatswain Bird Island. Thought on something. We had like 75 meters of chain out, so it's all zigzagged around a bunch of rocks. I think the visibility is good enough and you can see the chain on the bottom. Porridge for breakfast. Nom, nom, nom. You like porridge, right? It's all right. It fills you up. It's cheap. It gets you're the not, job done. When you eat it, you're not hungry for a long time. So that's good. But look, you got the blue special. You got fruit put in it. Yep. Pretty good. I can't wait for those bananas behind you to be right. Ditto. Imagine that in here. for the past week or so and so this map is pointing north up we'll motor around coming down here and we're coming into the wind the whole way because the southeasterlies are coming this way so we're kind of motoring into the trade winds and then we can come and tuck behind this little rock here and there's a mooring there that our buddy Craig from the boat we were out on the other day owns and according to this cool little book that somebody wrote about the island this is like the two best dives, so this area is the best for diving on the island. We just got to Botswin Bird Island. You see it behind us there. That's why it's called Botswin Bird Island. It's covered in bird shit. Pretty barren landscape though, all volcanic. So I was enjoying a snooze on the way here, and uh, I've just realized where the hell we are. Look at that. Jeez, it's a crazy island. It's an absolutely crazy island. Botswin Bird Island. Kaza, what a crazy place. Beautiful, huh? It's like insane. So, what are these guys doing, Kaza? So, we're gonna try to look up this morning, but it's, it's quite a close to the wall. Yeah. yeah. How do you face a fry? Like six? What? Is that, is that good or bad? 
I thought it was way less than that. But I guess the visibility is epic, so. Yeah. And there is uh, the faint pong of shite. I would say probably about one to ten. What would you say about the smell? Yeah, not that bad. I'd say about four and a half. Apparently they had a massive problems with feral cats on the island, on the main island, for quite a few years and all the seabirds died out from the island or they moved because literally the cats just ate all the eggs. Wow. So um, I think he said like a year ago or not very long ago they managed to uh, basically kill off all the feral cats so they've taken away all the cats and now some of the seabirds are coming back to the island they can actually nest again but this is the main one because it's just no predators it's nothing come in Brian shout at me Elizabeth coming captain yep so we just did a full circle of like 15 meters out from the mooring itself and we have good depth all the way around the line looks real thick and we'll just have to watch the stern swinging into the island okay copy that i think we'll hook it up so that we could uh do a real easy release if we need to and float away okay reverse is that good yeah I wonder who's just woken up. I've never known anyone to sleep as much as this little Austrian. Yeah, I'm ready. The vis is really good too. I'm really excited. But we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna dive in teams also because of the way the mooring is, and one of us always has to be on the boat to make sure if we need to break free and get away from the rocks, we don't get smashed. You ready, Brian? Yeah. Can you guys put in the ladder as well, maybe? Can you jump in first? Yes. Just remember, if you guys see a shark. Like on Splash a lot. Splash a lot. Blow bubbles in its scream. direction and scream underwater. Ah! This shark and his relatives are long established enemies of man. If sharks are in the area, you can repel them with sounds by striking the surface of the water with your cup hand. Or you can shout underwater. <laughs> Among the visual methods of preventing attacks are directing a stream of bubbles from your life preserver in his direction, tearing up paper into small pieces, and scattering them all around the raft. Remember that as a human being, you are smarter than a shark, if you use your head. Seriously, that's a real 1964 U.S. Air Force training film, and demonstrates just how little was known about sharks until very recently. Although honestly, I would much rather be scuba diving with sharks than bobbing around on the surface. We were told yesterday if, if sharks do come up to you and they're curious and inquisitive, always keep the camera pointed at them and take big deep breaths and bump them. Just like be the power in the ocean. Wait. Don't turn and run like we did. <laughs> that was actually the advice from the locals who regularly dive these waters. Stand your ground, be calm, never look away. And if they get a little too close for comfort, help them to understand that you are not their normal prey. The dive we are about to do is very special. Our friends Ellen and Craig told us about the diving here, saying it was a shark nursery for the local Galapagos shark population. Craig actually installed this mooring because they come here to photograph so often. 
Botswana Bird Island is located on the eastern side of the island, directly opposite from the main settlement. To come by boat requires hours of motoring directly into the swells and wind. The steep cliffs make it a foreboding island with no place to land, so very few make the trip. The waters are very rich here. The Benguela Current has made its way from cold southern waters and along the coast of Africa before striking the island on its continued journey west. Just offshore, the water drops to depths of nearly 5,000 meters. Deep water close to the island, with the rich current, means a healthy fish population, which makes it prime habitat for Galapagos sharks. Just around the corner, the waters are more protected, which makes it the perfect place for baby sharks to grow and get strong. Should we go down straight away, bro? Yep. Don't even feel that BC. Oh, she well, I need camera. to get the camera. I need yep. uh -huh. right behind you. I love to watch flounder swim, trying to find a good place to hide. And when they do find a good place, they can even camouflage themselves. Just like a chameleon on land. It wasn't long before we had our first shark encounter of the day. She wasn't huge, less than five feet in length, and an absolutely beautiful creature, and behaving just as we expected. It wasn't long before we had three of these beauties swimming in a racetrack pattern checking us out. They kept a good distance from us, and when we held our ground and confidently faced them, they would turn and swim away. Galapagos sharks are one of the larger species in its genus, commonly growing to 3 meters, nearly 10 feet and they can live for up to 24 years. Based on their size, these were definitely juveniles, so younger than six years of age. Large adult Galapagos sharks are known to eat other sharks, even their own, so the juveniles stick the shallow waters for safety. I'm much more afraid of these white spotted eels who lurk out in the open and act very aggressive if you get within striking distance. One even had a go at me on a previous dive.
lot of baby sharks, bro. Cool. Sweet. And they're, they're like baby Galapagos, you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're not white tips. I don't think they're gray as like the Galapagos. Oh, so cool. No. Did a lot you... of those damn white and black eels, though. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm more scared of the eels now. <laughs> damn, those eels are gnarly, man. The moray or the banded ones? The freaking one that tried to bite me yeah, the other okay. day. Yeah, Pretty good stuff. Awesome. And the water divers. Awesome dive. <laughs> we swam, like, down by the mooring and checked it out, and then along the edge at about 15 meters, kind of over to there. And, yeah, uh, I'm when, so not used to this visibility either. Because yeah, I was down there nah, 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 and then I was like, oh yeah, it's about 10 meters. Looked at my watch, 26 meters. I was like, <laughs> this bit is insane. Yeah, when you guys swam under the boat, we were at 20 meters and I could see you on the bottom swimming. Oh, really? Because yeah. we went by. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and then there's quite a few baby Galapagos like, right under us. Yeah. And it's about 15 meters right there. They definitely came a bit, one came quite close though. Yeah. Like maybe a meter and yeah. I got some really good shots of it. Oh. But, but just like... They're a lot, they're pretty timid. Yeah. Awesome. Alright, this place is pretty incredible underwater for sure and there's so many different types of birds flying above right here but to be honest the mooring's a bit sketchy. We're so close right now. It's like, yo. <laughs> Back to right again. It's this massive, massive drop. I think Dallas is gonna need a very, very, very deep clean <laughs> after we're here for another couple hours because the birds are pooping everywhere. Flying Brian, back at it again. That's right. Don't hit a bird. No birds. We were just discussing that, and I think the birds are super agile. Like if you're underwater with dolphins. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the I don't know. Unless the only thing we're worried about is if they attack it. Yeah. That was a smooth takeoff. It turns out that the entire top of this island is one gigantic plateau of bird guano. Bird guano is one of the best known fertilizers, and in the 19th century, it was highly sought after. I want to hear it again. <laughs> the remains on top are from an old guano mining operation. In the 1850s, the going price for a ton of guano was $50, or about $1,500 in today's dollars. In places, the guano appears to be a meter thick, and the very top of the island is approximately 60,000 square meters. It's literally a fortune to be had for those that were daring enough to land their boat at this concrete pad and toil day after day lugging guano down the cliffs. Even today, guano is highly sought after as an organic alternative and can pull in prices of up to $850 per ton. Did it cut you this time? No. That's nice. High five, high five. 
Good job, brother. Good fly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got some cool shots. We're having our pre-dive snacks. Lunch time comes along and the gas turns off. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, shame. It looks like our trusty gas switch has malfunctioned. We do not have a spare. No spare switch. Fuck. Hot wire. So I was just trying to cook lunch. <laughs> The stove stopped working, and this relay, or the switch, just went bad. The one that powers our gas solenoid. Maybe I can steal the one for the... The blower. The blower, since we're not using that thing. Yep. Or the, this fridge. I think the blower is better. Yeah, we've never used the blower, and since like... Boring. There's not There's not even anything hooked up to it right now. Yeah. <laughs> that blower sucks anyway. It caught on fire once. <laughs> that wasn't nice. Always something, huh? So we got the working switch out. Yeah, we're gonna steal the one from the fresh air blower. Obviously that one wears out because it gets used like every day. The uh, gas one you mean, yeah. Yeah. Watch your finger. Bad switch coming out. I think that's upside down. Like that. There you go. Almost, almost there. Get in there. I might have to get it from the other side. Yeah. Bingo. Lunch time. Now we can cook up some pasta. We spent the rest of the afternoon diving in teams, spending as much time as possible with our sharky friends. Just as expected, they were still hanging out right under Delos. As the day wore on, we were gradually able to get a little closer without scaring them off. It takes Galapagos sharks nearly 10 years to reach sexual maturity, and their pregnancy lasts for 12 months. They reproduce only once every two to three years, which makes them highly susceptible to overfishing and shark finning. Trigger fish are carnivores and they spend their days eating crabs, shrimp, sea urchins, worms, and other invertebrates. Jacks are the fierce hunters and hang out in large schools waiting for an opportunity. They are fearless and will often charge straight at you. These small groupers hang out under rocks and ledges, always on the lookout. Their meat's among the tastiest, and they're very popular for spearfishing. Towards the end of the dive, we saw perhaps the largest shark of the day. Our best guess is around eight feet. These amazing creatures can take up to nine years to grow to this size. at the surface now. I can see them. <laughs> camera, camera action! <laughs> camera, camera action! Hey! So hey, hey. good! I know! 
Fuck, so good. The baby sharks are so cute. I know. They are really friendly. Was it a good one? I think we're filming a lot today. I ran out of room that's a really small car too. Yeah. No, the sharks are so cool. There, at one time there was like four of them just cruising with us and like one was next to us and three were in front and then they'd go and circle around. It was really cool. So they were just crazy. so chill and relaxed. Look at those fucking eels are gnarly. <laughs> yeah, I tried I was... to take some pictures of them. I got like a, a couple of pictures of like two of them. Like... Just going along filming, mind my business, and I look over to my right, and there's one just like, <laughs> like what the f man, leave me alone! Cute. <laughs> I've only been snorkeling the once, and we're going again. A bit nervous, but it'll. If Brian's in the water, he's bigger than me, so if there's any big sharks, I'm sure they'll go for him first. That's what I'm hoping. Good, we're recording. Let's go. Come on, I'll be right behind you. I'll be right behind you. There you go, look down, you see Brian and Karen right there. Look down. There's the one. Oh, they're breathing some water. Clear the mask, clear it, clear it, clear it. I think sometimes we take things like snorkeling for granted. But she was doing pretty damn good for only her second time. That was perfect, but don't lift your head up like this. Keep it down when you blow the water out and it'll come out the bottom. I don't know what I'm so scared about. It's nice and chill, isn't it? Yeah. I think being able to not see when you're at the surface, but once you look under, you're like, oh, there's some fishies. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think it's just like the biggest known, isn't it? Yeah. And then, Liz spotted her first shark in the water. What do you think, mate? <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> it's your first shark! <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't fucking cry, Liz. <laughs> okay. They're beautiful little creatures. I don't even have any words. I don't know any words. Just keep watching them. To top off the experience, Liz got to see her first turtle in its natural element. just got back from um, a snorkeling session with um, Brady and Alex and I was really really scared about going. Um, I haven't had barely any experience with the sea really, especially not snorkeling or diving or anything like that and I'm quite naive still about the workings of the ocean and I, uh, I really want to learn and um, fuck, I actually feel really uh, emotional right now because I just got to see my first shark and I just got to see my first, I just got to see my first turtle. And uh, wow, I just, I just feel amazing. I mean, just, I got back up to the surface after seeing the turtle and I just started crying. I don't know whether it's just because of that experience of saving the baby turtles has just really touched me so deeply. And then seeing one of these turtles and Alex turned to me and she said, Elizabeth, this is one that made it. This is one that made it. So we're at this really cool museum uh, in Ascension and we're just learning about the, um, how the turtles got treated here. So basically what they would do um, back in the 1930s and before that, they would capture about 50 turtles each night as they were breeding and just whack them on the ships to go back to England because they survive a lot, a long time. They don't need much, they just need to be kept wet. And what they used to do is just flip them on their backs to capture them, as you can see here. Got these poor turtles just flipped on their backs. Many are the pathetic stories told of poor doomed turtles lying on their backs and shipboard and sobbing their lives away. It's been really sad since our experience with the um, baby turtles and seeing how amazing they are and it's crazy to see how, how they were treated. I mean, we heard this really cool story. Um, there was a ship of, uh, who had kept some turtles and they usually wrote on the back of the shells, oh, this is for the Bishop of Cantry, this is for such and such. 
and something happened on the ship and the turtles all fell out. A while later, they found this turtle with someone's name on its back on the same beach in Ascension, laying eggs all over again. So we felt really happy hearing that. During this time, so many turtles were killed that the population decreased dramatically. Now, over 70 years later, legal protection and conservation have really made a difference here. The average number of female green turtles laying their eggs on the beaches of Ascension Island has increased sixfold since the monitoring began in 1977. Flying the drone, you can really see the whole beach is filled with hundreds of holes, and they are all turtle nests. It's awesome to see that conservation and awareness have really helped the turtles here. Although these cute little creatures still have a lot to fear, as only an estimated 1% of the hatchlings actually reach adult size. I also looked into where these turtles go after laying their eggs on Ascension Island, and what I found was pretty amazing. Professor Lucy and Swansea University UK led a research team that tagged 10 female turtles tracking their epic migration across the Atlantic Ocean towards their feeding grounds in Brazil. It felt really amazing because this is the same 2500 nautical mile journey we will start soon. Yeah. And they made me really happy and that's what made me really emotional so I'm just really glad that there is wildlife in the world and that there's these creatures and you know what I saw the shark and I wasn't scared and there's only a baby shark fair enough but I wasn't scared and yeah my heart feels even more full today which is awesome yeah incredible experience shower time Not too bad, huh? This is pretty much incredible after swimming with the shark, swimming with the turtle, tour around the islands, and now a lovely shower at the back of the sunshine. So it's, what time is it? Like four or something? Four o'clock. Four o'clock, and we're just heading back to our trusty little anchorage on the lee side of the island. But wow. What a fantastic day! And we put some wine in the fridge and some beers. And we have lure out, so hopefully we'll catch a fish. And if not, we have steaks, so can't really lose on that one. T-bone steaks from St. Helena Island with garlic mashed potatoes. What? Voila! <laughs> uh, voila! 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 Look at Lisa's face! <laughs> That's such a big piece of meat! Whoa! That's what she said! Oh, one point, Brian, one point. Alex is just like, yes, naturally. <laughs> Up next, Mr. Brady teaches Liz and Lisa how to dive. How was that, guys? It was definitely one of my highlights. <laughs> you guys did it! We spot a manta ray in the anchorage. Look at that! No way! <laughs> and try to go ashore in some massive swells. Okay, go! <laughs> Shit, I'm in the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> you keep an eye on the dive time and then if I see your safety sausage or 45 minutes I'll come and get you. I'll show you my safety sausage. Yeah. Professor Lucy, I don't know. Professor Lucy, Profess, Professor Fuck. Professor, Professor Fuck. 
<laughs> now I can't say it. And get naked. Hey. Maybe you should just move in slow mo, Brian. Oh, wow. I think what we should do is go through here, through the 